All right, we're back with another special edition for you. Our special guests are multi-talented veteran musicians, performers, singers, players. You know all that great stuff. Please welcome from Freak Show, Ronnie Burchard and Stead Howard. They, thank you so how much. How are you? Hey, Ronnie, how are you? Hey, that's Boar Shirt, like boring Boar Shirt. Boar yeah, shirt. I, I said that. You probably <laughs> just couldn't get the pronunciation here. Boar Shirt, of course. We've uh, talked several times. And um, Stet, you are coming from Fort Myers, Florida. Now, that's by, is that on the Tampa side? Is that the inner coast? It, it is. It's on the Tampa side, west coast. Okay. We watch the sun set into the ocean. <laughs> wow. And, uh, of course, you are used to uh, storms coming through there, I'm sure. It gets hairy, yes. We're still <laughs> recovering from... Uh, from Ian, the last one really just really messed things up down on the beach. Wow. And where did you grow up, Seth? Where, where are you from originally? I grew up in Boston area, a uh, town okay. called Duxbury, Massachusetts. Yeah. Lo loving Buddy Rich, Gene Krupa, uh, Animal from the Muppets, Sam Kennison, Hulk Hogan. Those are hellified influences there. They are. Yeah. They're, they're a wide range of influences uh, and, and inspiration for sure. We love that. And Ronnie, where did you grow up? Um, I'm from Canada originally, uh, from BC. And then uh, my family moved to the Bay Area. So okay. I, was, uh, I was raised on, uh, you know, all the Bay Area bands growing up. So what West Coast from uh, Vancouver to San Diego, we, we, we call it all the West Coast. And Stad, I know you come out to uh, LA a lot and Vegas and all that. So I do. You are built built to travel. So now, how did you actually, guys say that again? I'm sorry, I didn't mean it up. I I actually live in Vegas, um, and I uh, I have I have a business in Florida. I got I have some prop investment properties here, so I'm back and forth a bit. But okay, I just want to throw that in there. So when you, when when you're not there, you have some. <laughs> when you're not there, you got somebody to hold down the fort. Absolutely, yes. Okay, great. I got an awesome awesome, awesome people here. Well, we got uh, we got Kansas City and San Francisco in the uh, Super Bowl, so that doesn't that doesn't bode uh, any East Coast bands or any East Coast teams made it into the uh, championship. I, I tend to think Ronnie's probably leaning to the 49ers being a Bay Area guy, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. How about you, Stad? Who, who's your horse in the race? I'm leaning the other way. I okay. Am, um, just a bit, because I go against the haters, you know. And well, I, we got we got a grudge match here. I'm not even sure who the underdog is. Are the 49ers the underdog? I, I know the, the, I know the Chiefs the have won it. Some people say too many times. So we. Yeah, and they got uh, they got the whole, you know, that whole group of Pfizer people and freaking Joe Biden people with Taylor Swift and all that shit. It's just bad news, dude. Well, the 49ers are, you know, the underdog and the team I'm going for. Plus, I, I'm a Raider fan, so I hate the Chiefs. All right. Well, Raiders, yeah, well. <laughs> Raiders Stadium, I, I, I hear a cheap seat is like $10,000 in the nosebleed. So uh, I'd, I'd rather watch too, it on TV with 19 camera angles and all the food and drink that I can uh, consume without those concession prices. So, Ronnie, tell us how. Stead came on your radar, and you guys joined forces in this latest version of Freak Show, So Shall It Be, the album. Yeah, uh, well, Stead, Stead and I have known each other for a long time, and over the years, you know, I've been kind of following his career. Um, I don't know about mine so much, but, you know, I've, I've stayed steady uh, since Stead and I did a song a long time ago, and uh, I've always, you know, Love Stat and and uh, we about oh, yeah. a year ago. Well, probably God, it's, it's, it's a little over that now. Uh, yeah. uh, Jeff and I, Jeff Labar uh, from Cinderella, we were going to do a new freak show record, and uh, we I asked Stat if he would do it with us, and Stat was down to doing it, and uh, you know Jeff was all down for doing it, and you know as we know, you know Jeff passed, and that sucked. So we we kind of, uh, you know, we didn't know what we were going to do. And I just asked him one day, do you, you still want to do this album? And let's dedicate it to him and see what happens. And 
And we put the whole lineup together that way, kind of, you know, not really knowing because, you know, the four of us have never played together as a whole like this. And uh, it just came out like, <laughs> I think five times better than I thought it was going to. So. Right. I know. I thought I could great. Hey, I just wanted to interject real quick. Yes, please. I don't know if you if you remember, uh, Ronnie, but the day, the day that you called and asked me if I wanted to do a record with you and Jeff, he died later that day. That was the day he died. I don't know if you, I don't know if you remember that, but that was, that was insane. Did you, did you know that? Oh man. I, it's, it was such a, it's such a crazy moment that maybe that's what it was. I, I think Jeff and I had already decided because we were, I was just on the phone with them like six days before it happened. Right. And uh, we, we had all, had decided that we were going to have you. And he was like, yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> My impression of him. But uh, uh -huh. and he was just going to finish up an album that he was doing with his son. And then sure. we were going to start doing this thing. But, you know, Stet, uh, I, I kind of wonder sometimes, you know, because he was like excited to do it, you know. And, uh -huh. you know, but, we, you know, it's crazy kind of moment, but um, he, he, you know, we, we did a nice thing for him. This is the album here. And then. Yeah, uh, nice nice we, tribute to him. Yeah. So, so he, he, he wasn't sickly before he passed, huh? I mean, uh, well, you know, in, he, in his voice on the telephone, you couldn't tell he was. Yeah. Well, to yeah. Meet his, uh, he told me something. He told me. Yeah, I didn't. I've never really actually, no one's actually asked me this before. So um, he, it's just that this is a touchy sub subject because we, he said he wasn't feeling right. And I actually include that in the lyric of the, he says, I don't feel right, dude. I know my body and something's wrong. And, you know, and then there's the other reasons why we think that might have happened. I don't want to get into it because it could turn into a controversy and I don't need people coming after me. But we, uh, it, you know, it's just sad because I think he kind of knew yeah. something was wrong. And then when I heard the news, I I think I spoke to you, Stet, and told you, hey, it's Jeff and I, we're going to do this and we want you and we're going to move forward. And, you know, I think... Uh, and then we originally were going to have Lonnie play bass. And I think I said something to him and he's like, dude, I'm sick inside. I can't believe it. And, and I, I think none of us knew it was yeah. like real, you know, it was crazy because it's like haunting. Cause we go back to this conversation that Jeff and I had like months before when Frankie died right. and he, he was a part of the first freak show album. And he says, shit, dude. I hope I'm not next. Oh. And I'll never forget it for like the rest of my life. It's yeah. like, yeah, that's Frankie Benali we're speaking about. I was at his memorial at uh, uh, the, uh, what, what do they call it? Forest Lawn there in Burbank. So, Stet, you can say uh, what you want about this. These days, you know, a musician, especially anybody touring and doing shows, it's almost like you got to be an athlete, you know, um, <laughs> you do. In, in, in the past it's sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And as long as you could as you stand up or get propped up on stage, you might make it through as a drummer. You probably always knew, man, I, I got to be in shape. This is a, a workout every night besides the travel. But these days you talk to these artists on, on, on the road and the successful ones, are not only usually sober, but they're like athletic, you know, you go backstage and people think it's going to be Sodom and Gomorrah before show. It's more like juicing and pumping <laughs> iron and exercising. It's, it's so funny. Uh, that you, and touching on that with metal church is a good example. We just got done with a, a, a very successful uh, world tour and it was amazing and, and all that stuff. But I, would have to get but we played a lot of the older stuff i was very aggressive when i was playing you know at uh, this tour so i would i would actually come in and train no no bullshit i would train and get ready for the tour and i found out i was diabetic or oh, a couple of years ago 
So I lost a bunch of weight. I keep my weight right at about 200 pounds. And I'm like, uh-huh. totally, I don't get fucked up at all on the road. You know, it's like, yeah. it's, it's, it's like, we take, we take it really serious and it is challenging physically. And for me, I'm still lucky. I feel great. I'm, I'm lucky to have a situation here I, I, that I can work out and play my drums when I want. And, and, I, and a lot of freedoms and I, and I can afford to eat decent foods, you know, so I know I'm lucky for that. But uh, yeah, you, you have to really keep your body in shape. And that's one of the things that just happened with Metal Church is our guitar player, Kurt, was functioning with like broken his back, his discs in his back. He was in pain. I mean, I know the guy. I was right next yeah. to him. He was in fucking pain, uh, you know, and, and it was like, is this, is this worth it for a minute? You know, he wanted to, he chose now to be the time to fix himself. So there can be a later. So, and no one, no one really argued with that, you know, but so it is all about physically feeling good. And if you, and if you love your bandmates, you're going to, you're going to care about their health more than you're going to care about pushing them, pushing them more for your own selfishness. So you can make more money and, and further your career and all that shit. So yeah, if you're not going to get better. And, if it's not going to, you know, resolve itself. You got to get that surgery. It's like an athlete getting an ACL injury. Yeah. You're out, you're out absolutely. for months, but you're going to come back yeah. and have a shot at it. If you if you right. continue the way you are, you're gonna kill your chances. And we're at a sensitive age. All of us in, in the metal church are in our fifties or early sixties. It's like if you're gonna hit a health problem, man, you got to jump on it now while your body will accept you know these type of operations where they rip you open because there's a certain age where you become more of a health risk on the on the operating table. You know, so it's like yeah. there's a lot of factors. So I don't mean to go so long winded, but that what you touched on is such a, a sensitive subject, especially in my life. And I really do myself. I, I, if I could pan over. We actually have dumbbells in like, oh, yeah. we got full facilities and pun- punching mean, bags here. And, I mean, look, look, look at, you know, look at Phil Kahn with Def Leppard, man. The dude's got like a 12 pack. He's pumping iron and all this <laughs> shit before he hits He's the awesome. stage. He's awesome. He's got a punching bag. I mean, it's a yeah. very athletic thing. And, Today, people are paying a lot for a ticket and to get a babysitter or plan and go out and park and get drinks or food. I mean, they expect to see people in shape and doing a show. They're, they're, they're not going to uh, let you uh, give you a pass because you had a hard night of partying and you're hungover and you're limping through and phoning it in. When, when I was in Wasp, one thing Blackie would drill into our heads. He's like, listen, you guys. No one wants to get reminded. The people that pay money for tickets don't want, want to be reminded of how old they are getting by looking at you. You know, they want to look at you. And like, you know, when you go to see Kiss, say what you will. Friggin' Paul Stanley look amazing right to the end. I don't, you know, I mean, yeah. not that not that his ends here, but those guys, all of them, the, the whole band, you know, and it's like, it's hard. It's it, Sometimes it's hard, but yeah, you got to go that extra mile. If you think you're going to be a rock star, you got to, you got to work for it, man. Unless you're, one of those lucky little lead singer bastards that stay skinny on their own. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's a different age. And like you say, you got to adapt. R- Ronnie, what do you look for or instill in your bandmates to have that kind of work ethic or fighters kind of attitude? Yeah. Well, you know, I'm, uh, I'm younger than all of them, but I'm already feeling all those things. So, I think it's just like when you start hitting that age of, uh, you know, pains here, pains there, and then you got to perform on stage. And then not only do you got to perform, you got to perform that album, right? And then recording an album and performing an album is different. So you have to come up with, you know, major. Uh Oh, he's coming out with the light. Jedi style stuff that's great i'm just saying you got to work hard and you're only as good as as you feel you know you don't want to go on stage feeling and looking like shit so you know when you see guys like phil collin and you see dudes like paul stanley who's 70 plus years up there that just makes you go i just better shut the f up and just kind of get my gig right you know because there are plenty of examples of dudes out there you know and Def Leppard is definitely one of them you know because they're still good like really good it's not a joke they make great records still and when they play they they set a a standard you know of of what you want to sound 
they're older, but they're like, hey, we're older rad dudes in shape. And everybody sings in that band. A lot of people think they're running tracks on those backing vocals. They all sing. Yeah, no, they do. And 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 they and they they throw in a lot of tracks and stuff too, but sing along with them. And then they do, you know, it, who cares? I don't even care about that stuff. That that doesn't bother me. As long no, as I'm, the band I'm just great. saying they pr they pride themselves like Steve Brown who filled in yeah. for Viv and for Phil at one point. Okay. Joe Elliott yeah. told him, he said, look, dude, yeah, of course we want you to be a good guitarist, but the vocals, the vocals is what you need to excel at. So make yeah, sure you're in harmony with it. And, and they all sing before they go out on stage. They do that, you know, stand around in a circle and sing. Yeah, and it shows, man. One. It shows. Yeah. I'm not against that. They, they've lost two guitarists to alcohol. So, you know, it's one thing to party, but if it's yeah. going to kill you and... um all that you know it's it's just not not worth it there's a it's all about balance i'm I'm sure you learned that early That's on right. scat the word balance <laughs> you know? yeah dude yeah i it yeah it was it was a fight when living in la man i lived right on san vicente i could see the whiskey's marquee from my okay <laughs> so so i mean balance it, it was tough those back in those days because you could it, six nights a week, the strip was hopping. It'd be, you'd be lucky to be a dead night. And you'd be thankful because you'd save some money and stay home and get some rest. But that place was ripping. So it took a lot of restraint. And we were always making records with Wasp. So I, I lived in West Hollywood, right where all the hell was. And then, yeah. but Blackie lived like up in, up in the hills and stuff. So I'd be, you know, up and down and, and, you know, trying to restrain yourself because, you know, you got to be at the studio the next day. It was a lot. But, yeah, you, you, know, you, you were like was, Lemmy, you know, Lemmy could uh, walk up to the rainbow and kind of stumble <laughs> home, you know, dude, I, I, I don't even want to get carried. Yeah. Lemmy was my neighbor and uh, we used to walk to the rainbow uh, uh, like five, six nights a week. And um, <laughs> yeah, we would, we would see each other there every night and we took the same path. So on uh, that path was, there's a building called the 9,000 building on the side sure. of the 9,000 building. There's an electric box on the electric box is where we leave me and him both had the habit. We I'd make a nice bloody Mary and he'd have make his Jack and Coke or whatever. And we drink one on the walk to the rainbow. And, and the, the 9,000 building was right across the street from the rainbow. So you'd leave what's left of your drink on the box and go to rainbow. And then usually, for, you know, forget to go to get it. So basically I would know if he was already at the rainbow by if there was a fresh glass there and vice versa. That was kind of a little thing. And, and it, was, it was, I always thought that was a cool rock and roll story that I've only got to tell like once before. Well, that's uh, yeah, great. It's kind of leave, leaving breadcrumbs, you know, it's, exactly uh, leaving a trail. And, but, and, but, in but, but you, you, you could almost know, you could set your watch like, yeah, let me at the rainbow. You know, even if there's not a drink up here, I bet that motherfucker is at the end of the bar playing that fucking game <laughs> all you have to do is look at the tour schedule and if it's not on tour you know I, in the old days it was pole star it was the only thing and i look yeah. at pole star i go because people are coming to town i go you think we can meet lemmy i go i don't know hold on i look at pole star i go well he's not on the road he's most likely up at the boat playing <laughs> the pac-man machine and as it happens at my bar here i have a corner dedicated to lemmy with a picture of him and a pac-man machine okay <laughs> no bullshit. yeah yeah he, he he definitely uh died with his boots on you know he went all the way he was amazing he was amazing wow. and i was lucky because mickey d was always one of my best buddies like early yeah. on before he was even in, in right after merciful fate we became friends and just sure best just buddies we love each other and we uh so i got to i got to know lem real good and he was my neighbor and then we did that ill-fated wasp tour in 97 with the wasp and motorhead but me and lem were still cool you know so, yeah and uh we lost a, another one list. with uh james kotak but yeah mickey d man fills in and holds it down for the scorps you know Again, james yeah. Is a dear yeah. yeah james another one man you know the alcohol definitely was part of his demise you know it's just uh sucks it's a shame yeah you, like, like you said That's you gotta true. find your moderation yeah yeah so ronnie talk about uh we got the video oh, for It Hurts Me. Yeah, great song. And You Shine. Were those uh, filmed separately, or did you knock them out one, two? Yeah, we, we actually did those in, in a, over over two days. Okay. And uh, we just we picked those two. 
and uh, we got a couple other ones on there. But I just wanted to say really quick, um, you know, how Stet knows Lemmy and stuff. I, I got to know Lemmy, too. And a lot of people probably don't know this, but uh, I met I met Lemmy through Bobby Blotzer, of course, at the Rainbow. But um, Bobby was living in Mickey D's old house in uh, in Palos Verdes. Okay. And I I did a jacuzzi yeah. with with Lemmy one night, and it's it's hilarious because Lemmy is very old school, almost like World War II, if you know the dude. Oh oh yeah. And the did, funny did, he, thing, did he get into the hot tub with his boots on? That's what we want to know. No, but Blotz and I got in first, okay, and we were there and we were waiting. We're like, what's taking this guy so long? And and dude, you you guys probably Stet's gonna believe this, but. He comes out. <laughs> are you are you ready for this? He comes out and he's all, hey. And we look, and he's got a full on skin colored bodysuit from the war. And then he gets in. He was basically wearing like these pajamas, dude. And I'm like, whoa, what's that? And he's all this is yes, from the war, you know, like, I got all these things. <laughs> okay. So long, long story short, he became really good friends with my dad. I know, but my dad's German. <laughs> and a lot of people don't know that Lemmy's German. He's not English. A lot of people think he's, you know, from England. He's not. Kilmeister. Yeah, he's, he's German. So that makes sense. Uh, you know, he's on the phone with my dad talking about all these German artifacts that they collect and all this shit. And I'm like, well, damn, that was and me and the blots, like, dude, blots, this is how blots talks. He goes, dude, look, what? I invited the guy over here to hang out with us, and he's on the phone with your dad. Sure. Anyway, but long story short, you know, Lemmy's a, a character, man. Well, and Lemmy I, was a collector of those artifacts. Awesome. And Stad, if you yeah. ever went to his apartment, you know, man, you could barely squeeze through all the shit he had on the wall. Dude. Yep. Boxes. That, I only been there one time. I loved and, it, and it, it that's the only place I've ever went to in Hollywood, where there's just <laughs> stacks of all this stuff in an apartment, and then there's this couch that you sit on that you got to move some shit, and then there's a gigantic freaking swastika freaking. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> He, <laughs> he was didn't awesome. Even care. It was like like a World War museum over there. Oh my God! It he was. had like Luger's and badges and these out like jackets and all from like World War II. It was like crazy. Wow. He was a wonderful man, though. Yeah. Well, yeah, I know. Was. I know. It's the in the spirit of all our fallen soldiers. You know that you guys put into every recording you do, every show you do. You carry a little bit of the the pride of these guys that uh, not only maybe influenced or inspired you or just keep you laughing or telling stories like, man, that, that dude was full on. Yeah. yeah. You, could do, you could do a TV show of just everyone's Lemmy experience. It would be like, what, eight episodes? For Cram That's like a five, great idea. You know, the I Lemmy mean, experience. And then everyone just tells their Lemmy story, you know? I, I mean, it's so funny for me because uh, he was just like my buddy and I'd see him all the time. I, you know, Blackie had us thinking we were the biggest band in the whole world. I didn't, you know, I didn't realize what a legend Lem was. I just thought it was like, oh, he's the guy from Motorhead. They're all right. You know, and I always liked him, but I never, you know, realized that my buddy's a legend. He's, you know, he got a, he's a statue. Because, you know, it's like, wow. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad I, I'm glad I was nice to him is all I'm saying, you know, Jesus. Very yeah, good. yeah, he's an inspiration from you know Metallica on down. That's for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And and, and we've yeah. lost we've lost so many of our heroes, man. It's like every week we get these damn obituaries, like, oh fuck. I know. You know? Um more and more people. So besides uh holding it in moderation, you pretty much have to live every day to the fullest because you never know when it is your last. Just in case. That's right. Living yeah, good. That's true. I mean, it's ridiculous how so, many people... So, so, Ronnie, where did you shoot these videos at? Uh, we did them in uh, Reno, Nevada. Damn. That's crazy. On a, on a, you know, soundstage, uh, you know, 
place where they do you all got, that stuff. You got Carlos from Northridge, California. You got Stat either in Vegas or Florida, Fort Myers. You got Rick Fox out there somewhere in Missouri somewhere. And uh, you're up in yeah, Reno, of course. It's your backyard. But e even trying to get Carlos to leave the house, man, is is crazy. It, so. it, it's it, it, Yeah, it was it was cool um, to do that and, and have Carlos be involved. I think it, it, it had a lot to do with the quality of uh, music we, we put out together. You know, after we like listened to it and you yeah. know heard the final stuff, we were like, hey, I think we got something here, you know? I mean, everyone was That's really on board with, you know, kicking out a couple of videos to see what happens, you know? The yeah, first just... video um, kind of showed that we were real, you know? Right. A lot of people were In the like, same room, because a lot of these videos are kind of patched and... Yeah, you know, you know pro tooled and auto tuned and uh Photoshop together. Right. And we told yeah. everyone about this project like a year before the album came out. So some people were like, Okay, what's the update this week? You know what I mean? So we had to make it, you know, legitimate that we were actually really doing it. So Well, I was just with Carlos a couple of days ago. Of course, you know he was inducted in the Metal Hall of Fame down there at NAM. Awesome, you man. Know. He deserves it. Yeah, it was an awesome, awesome evening, and NAM is back in January where it belongs. So, uh, looking forward to next year. So, you yeah, got the two we're videos. Gonna go right, we're going to be there next year. Yeah, I was actually going to be there this. Year. I was supposed to be there this year. My wife Heidi was working. She worked at the Rockstar Guitars booth okay. um, with Lisa, with Lisa Johnson, and uh, but I'm in Florida. I have to be here. We're doing inspections at my bar and I'm, I'm doing all the, I'm saving myself thousands of dollars by doing a lot of my own work and negotiating my own work um, um, to, to pass uh, inspections for my new liquor license. So I, I miss Nam because of that. And I got the final stuff inspectors coming through tomorrow. So I'm sitting here with my fingers crossed. I think I got everything good, but it's, it's uh, well, well, best yeah. of luck on that, man. The liquor license is everything in the club business. Yes. Yeah. Well, we're good. I mean, we're good. We're just, we're transferring it, but in doing so, I'm being looked at as a new business. And my building was built in 47 or something, uh -huh. you know, and then it was actually opened as a bar in 87. I don't think an inspector of any kind has been through since then. So we've done many, many things in the last few weeks here. And, uh, you know, uh, it was important that I, that I was here. But, uh, yeah, we will be at NAM next year. Absolutely. Um, Nam, it's just you know, Nam's just finally recovering. You know, yeah. I, I it looked like back a, on track. It looked like kind of an, and it looked like a bit of an empty mall when I saw a lot of the video. It was the old days. Nam was a zoo, and I guess these days it's a little more sparse. So maybe uh, you know, as the years go by, it'll it'll start getting a little more, a little more. Uh, there, there was a good uh, crowd traveled. this year. You know, it was definitely it? it definitely got a little crazy uh, when they had it in June and then April because most most people yeah. are on tour. You know and. Absolutely, especially in yeah. june you know it's like what the hell but um january is the right time yeah it, it definitely is right after the holidays new year's you know you got nam and back back on yeah. track but um and, and what kind of gear are you using these days that what kind of drums and sticks and all that oh i've i've been i've been dw drums for uh going on uh, going on 30 years same with uh victor sticks sabian cymbals and um uh remo drum heads okay and um you know I'm, i've been i've been with the same companies just you know I've, i had a good relationship back in the day and i just i keep playing and breaking things and and we uh you know we work together i'm i'm, I'm blessed i mean i think dw is the greatest drum company on the planet i when i first got the endorsement with them i couldn't believe it you know back in in 95 i think it was and i was in wasp at the time but i was still like oh my god i got them you know i was yeah, I must have from, celebrated for 10 days at the rainbow. <laughs> from from Oxnard, California. We love DW. The no, best. No man. doubt. And how about you, Ronnie? What kind of gear? What kind of amps and guitars are you using? Um, well, on the record, I, I use the new 50 watt Eddie Van Halen um head that it's pretty much over the top. Uh probably like to get the hundred watt for, for live. Um working on you know, getting an endorsement there. I just want to play all the Van Halen. So if I got all the Van Halen guitars um, and I, I use those on the record. So uh, I'm playing Marshall. I got Marshall, uh, all Marshall gear, uh, kind of the same as Carlos. Um, but I'd like to play the Van Halen gear exclusively. EVH. Nice. 
Yeah, 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 no doubt. And and speaking of that, er, early on, Stet, when did Van Halen first come on your radar? Did you hear it in real time in I mean, the debut? Yeah, in re- in real time, it came popping out of my buddy's convertible speakers uh, at a at a bonfire party. Yeah, oh, I heard man. "Running with the Devil," and I was, "What the hell is this? This is amazing!" Yeah, wow. A, a, a real time into thing. eruption into ain't talking about love, man. That that'll peel your head back. Uh, that, that was all great, man. You really got me. That's right. You really got me into ain't talking about love. Yeah. What 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 a what a debut, man. <laughs> Dude, that first album is so ridiculous. It's just it paved, paved the way for just album after album. Those records with Roth, man, just yeah. I, I, I still wonder what uh, Sabbath was thinking. You know, Ozzy said, you know, after they had Kiss on a previous tour, they said, oh, just get an L.A. bar band. Well, unfortunately, they got the wrong uh, L.A. bar band to open, man. They smoked them know. there every That's night. That's amazing. That's amazing. I mean, these I days, know. a headliner would have shown them the door real fast, but I think they were locked in. They were both on Warner Brothers, and they had some kind of deal or contract, and they couldn't get out of it. I spoke to Geezer and everybody about it, and they're just like, yeah, that's why that's that, wild. That, that wild sounds like a demo. <laughs> yes. Think Sabbath, about it. Ozzy Geezer. was on the end of his uh, run with Sabbath, and Van Halen was shot out of a cannon. Yeah. So uh, amazing yeah, was... times. Yeah. And how many years were you with Wasp now, Stat? Uh, 16. 16 years. I was... God. Yeah, 16. I mean, I was... I was in and out a few times during the 16, but I, okay. it was a 16 year run. And I, uh, yeah, we, we, we had an amazing, we had an amazing, amazing time. And, and uh, you know, my stories with Blackie, I, I, we're still, we still get along great, you know, and uh, oh, we love, we love, we love each other. You know, it's, it's, I mean, I understand him and Chris have grievances and stuff and that's their business, but uh, me and him good, you know, and, and you, you came in, and was... <laughs> you came in after Frankie Benali, right? That's right. Yeah. Okay. And and again, yeah. rest, rest, rest in peace to our, uh, oh, our, man. our, our guy from uh, LA Guns, um, Steve Riley. Steve Riley. Yeah, I I love those two guys. I mean, it's like drummers. It, we we get along. It's, no matter what shit they try and put between us, we get along. And you know, me and Frankie were always really, really good and warm and and friend, good friends. And me and Riley too. Uh, we we did the uh, L.A. Guns uh, toured with Wasp uh, uh, in 2005. Metal Blast, the Metal Blast tour was, okay. it was Wasp, L.A. Guns, Stephen Piercy, and Metal Church. It was a great tour, and uh, and me and me and Riley, we we we'd, uh, after every show we have a little meeting in the back lounge, have a little wine, smoke a couple of doobies. It was just beautiful, and we talk business because we're you know we both were involved in the business of the bands. Yeah. And and it was really a really really healthy time, you know. We had great times, and I, I miss those guys. I, I might just like you know Jeff Labar. I want to. I hope I'm not uh, next. I'm like, wow. It's like I can't believe Frankie and 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 Riley are gone. I'm like, it's you know, <laughs> it's just weird. Yeah, well, especially and, and with was, the drums, it's very very athletic. You know, it's uh, know. it it takes everything you got, man, to keep to keep up and keep uh keep in shape i'm i'm sure and uh hopefully uh is blackie got his uh back in order is his uh, back fixed you know i the last time I, I haven't talked to him since before the holidays and um um he was getting he was getting sore and he said it hurt he said he did he's like i never felt such pain he's like i thought i knew pain i was like oh man i feel so bad i go because i i said bro if you actually I sat in a chair to, to I know you you know I know him it's like you know he want he didn't want to let everybody down but I for him to actually sit in a chair and, and sing that's that's fucking that's ballsy but that guy I swear to God is such an amazing singer that <laughs> it's like I saw some of those videos and if you listen to what he's the guy is flawless he, I mean he's he's got such control of his voice it's ridiculous uh, bitching so love. Yeah, I, I spoke to John Bush, and they had a great time. Armored Saint out there with Wasp. Oh, I love Bush. I know they're going out with uh, Queensryche here. So, yep, yep. yeah, and, and I know you we guys love are. Them. Yeah, you guys are trying to put some shows together, trying to figure out what Freak Show can do live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're just. What opening are you thinking? Southern up, California, the Bay, Vegas, or Midwest? What are you thinking? 
I'm uh, thinking right now uh, we're go ahead, go ahead, Marty. No, I, you know, I was just gonna say what you're gonna say. Go ahead, you say it. <laughs> My, what I was gonna say is we're we're in the point right now where we're uh we're in that cherry picking uh state of mind. We're wait we just became a band, you know, we're we're waiting for um the band to build in certain areas, which is now happened. And now we're waiting for offers, which is just starting to happen. We have to have multiple offers so we can pick through them and start assembling actual, you know, groups of dates and stuff. So that we're at that, at that stage right now where we're, there's enough interest or offers are coming, but we need to have more offers. Then we're going to finesse the offers, turn them into realities. And we'll be start doing groups of shows. Of course, we'll do the West coast, you know, of course, you know, we'll do the, the central America and we'll do some, the East coast. But, uh, you know, we, we got to be sensitive to people's schedules. And, and for all of us at our age, we only want to do quality shows, you know. I mean, we can do a shithole or two to, to, to get the bugs out. But, you know, we want to only do, like, good stuff. Multi-band bills and, you know, cool events, you know. Yeah. Well, with uh, everybody's heritage, you, Stat, and, of course, Carlos and Rick and, and, and Ronnie coming up, you know, um, there's such nostalgia for the for the 80s, you know, so. Hopefully, even though this is new music, you guys will fit in nicely with a lot of those bands that you spoke of that uh, were delivering, you know, in that golden era. Yeah, I think there's a lot of places for this band. I think the 80s cruise type of things are good places. I think there's a lot of the multi bands where you got your Slaughters and Vixens and Quiet Riots and everybody out there and Lita and everybody. I think there's I think there's a lot of places this band will fit nicely. And, you know, it's like, hey, we're all accomplished guys. Sure. And I played on a lot of records and all that. Yeah. But Carlos Cavazzo is a fucking superstar guitar player. You know, Randy Rhodes showed him, showed him what to do. So, you know, there's that. So with that, I, no disrespect to us, Ronnie, but I'm just saying that's how I feel. You know, I'm not putting myself down. Like, hey, I'm a counselor at Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp, you know, but it's like I'm a rock star counselor. Yeah, I get that. But then we have like the superstar guys come in, like you know, uh, Lou Graham from Florida comes in, and he's a like the special, the special star. So I kind of feel like Carlos is on a, on his own level. No, yeah, I mean, I mean, you got to look at it like this: I'm the most unpopular underground rocker in this band, so that kind of makes it work. <laughs> I mean, think about it; it kind of makes Not it true. work because it's still fresh, right? You know, I, I'm not known to the millions of people like you guys are. And here's an example. Like when I was a kid, when I was, you know, growing up, uh, no matter where I lived, I always had like rock star posters and stuff. I had posters of all of these guys on my walls, right, where they didn't have posters of me. So I'm still kind of that face in this freak show project with the nucleus of, of you know, Carlos and Stett. And even Rick, who played with Ingve back in the day, like, you know, because he always brings that up. Those are the things that that make Freak Show what it is. Even though we had Greg Chase on on the record, which is, I couldn't, those base, the things that you and, and Greg did together on that record, how it locked like that. You can't, you can't, uh, you can't pay someone to come in and do that. Those kinds of. That's him. Is, that's him, Ronnie. Yeah. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's great. Exactly. And I, right. and I knew that when we got him and chose him for this, and I'm so glad we did. Nothing against Rick, because, you know, Rick's great. But Greg is just an amazing guy, because we got to say that, because we do all these interviews, and, and no one ever brings Greg up, <laughs> you know, because he's such a great player. So you add Carlos Cavazzo, who took over for Randy Rhodes in Quiet Riot, and knew him and talked to him on the phone. I mean, he channels Randy on this record, including his own style. Like, he these songs brought out Carlos Cavazzo like never before. And I'm just right. so happy and grateful that I'm a part of this. <laughs> you know? Well, no doubt, you know, Randy Rhodes, his family, Musonia music schools, right up the street from us right here in North Hollywood, still, still happening. The legendary, I call it the hallowed halls or as Zach wild calls. This is Mecca. That's what Zach calls it. But, yeah. um, yeah, man. Randy was from Burbank and uh, Edward was from Pasadena. I mean, what incredible guitar gods came out of this area in the late 70s. Dude, the best yeah. ever. I mean, you could say Amazing. out of all the 
like like let's let's look at this for a second. If like you were to make a list of like the greatest guitar players, you know, Los Angeles was the melting pot, you know, through time, you know what I mean? And Eddie paving the way for guys like, you know, even Randy and and even though they were sort of around, but when he got an Ozzy is when he got popular, right? And Eddie had been there and they were kind of little dudes playing clubs on the same circuit. And then you got Warren D. Martini, you know, Carlos Cavazzo. These dudes just Jakey like, Lee, all these guys coming up. Oh, dude, right. flourish out of that freaking melting pot. Because, you know, England had some dudes, you know, but they were a little more old school, like Paige and Clapton and stuff. The the age of like really dissecting guitar started with Eddie Van Halen. And I think any guitar player knows that. Yeah, Ed, Edward and uh, Randy were only just a few exits apart on the 134 freeway right here with Glendale in between. Them. about each other, like, you know, big time, you know. But, um, and you know, Chris, I, I was just, I mean, I want to inject Chris Holmes was neighbors to Eddie Van Halen. Oh, and yeah. that's, you know, that's, that's where he got all, all his early, early influences and stuff. And then th- those guys were friends, um, you know, right till the end, I guess. Yeah, I, I love Chris's stories. And my favorite one is he said Ed came over to his house to show him some new amp or something. And he turns it on and Ed starts, you know, wailing. And he says, Hey, Chris, don't you want to shut your windows? He had his windows up, you know, like neighbors (laughs) a few feet away. And Chris says, no, I want, I'm hoping they think that's me. Yeah. I remember that story, (laughs) dude. Yeah. That's fucking awesome. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, Holmes has like Holmes has a ton of great stories, and he's got cassettes of them from like uh, Six Flags and all that shit. Oh you know yeah, what I mean? like, Magic Mountain. Yeah, where, back when the songs were all different and all twisted, and you know, uh, I guess yeah. Mutt Lang or whatever, like Gizari and all that up, shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, serious history. Yeah, well, we know you guys bring it. We want to encourage everybody to get that record. It is Freak Show. So shall it be. Love you guys, man. I want to see you uh, live sometime soon. So Ronnie Borshirt and, of course, Stet Howland bringing it live, man. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us. Looking forward to uh, more great talks and spreading the word. Freak show all the way. Thanks, Thank you. Guys. Thank you so Thank much. You.